Hello friends, welcome to Project X. Today I'm back with another new tutorial project. In this tutorial, we're going to make a static art gallery website. And as you know, in, art, in an art gallery, you can find all type of digital images or photographic images, whatever you may need. So you can make a static website for showcasing your skills. If you do photography or you do art you can build a static website and put all your works in it and host it in internet so everyone in the world can see so let's get started for this project we are going to use visual studio code it's a free to use uh, code editor so here you can see this icon you can download it from visual studio code website and install it in windows it's also available for mac and ubuntu so it's very easy to use and also available in all the popular operating systems so you can use it anywhere so before making our site let's create a folder for it uh, let's say we name our uh, art gallery as let's say JK art kind of cool name for that so we're going to save all files needed in this folder so first thing we're going to do we need to create a welcome page so for doing that Let's open Visual Studio Code and say new file. So before proceeding any further, I want to save this untitled file to that folder. So save and go to desktop, JK art, make it all types and name it as index.html. Now it's pretty important for this file to be named as index.html because most of the web servers web hosting servers identify this index named html file as the starting page as the starting page or you can say or the landing page of your site that means whenever you open the link for the site this index.html gets open by default so let's say if you open www.facebook.com by default the page open is www.facebook.com slash index.php or something so we name our home page as index.html save it so we are ready with an html the first thing we are going to do okay, okay before proceeding let me tell you we are going to use here only HTML, CSS and JavaScript and mostly for CSS we are going to use Bootstrap so people who know a little bit of Bootstrap but hasn't done any major project in that trust me this tutorial is going to be very useful for you so first things first we have to declare our doc type so this tag generally is tells the browser that it's an HTML5 type of document now different versions of HTML have different type of doc type so for HTML5 it's pretty simple it's HTML right so <coughs> let's first tag be HTML then we'll define head we'll define the inside things later first let's make the skeleton then body and HTML so in the head we are going to first use a title for our site Sorry. so our title for our home page maybe um, welcome to JK art The next thing we are going to do and the most important thing is we import 
all the libraries we are going to use in our project so that will be bootstrap and for bootstrap we are going to need jquery also so we can import any library in two different ways we can download the library from its site or we can use the CDN reference so we are going to use CDN reference because it has several advantages if you use the downloaded files and if you use the CDN files so you are going to get better performance in CDN references because in CDN references that directly corresponds to a network site so it gets fast loaded into the backend and you can use it faster so in order to get a CDN link just search in Google jQuery CDN so you can get to W3 schools and you can get this you see this complete tag for importing jquery as uh, cdn so you can find that this jquery version is 3.2.1 and we will directly paste it in our site so jquery is imported so next we will do our bootstrap cdn so you can get it in directly the first link you can see bootstrap provides us two libraries one is for javascript for introductions and another is css for designs so one great thing about using bootstrap is that you don't need to you don't need to specifically handle for multiple devices that is responsiveness you can automatically get that if you import if you use the bootstrap libraries because it's already written there so we're going to import it sorry and similarly we are going to use step js so the tag will be same only the link will be different so let me replace that link with bootstrap okay so our project is ready to be written so let's start it now first we are going to need a header where the gallery name will be displayed and some page links means if we want to navigate to another page it's better that it it is provided in the heading section so that it's easily available and also visible to everyone so let's create a header so we're going to use bootstrap or built-in CSS for that so we're going to use nav tag and we import the bootstrap class network and network default so these are bootstrap defined libraries and bootstrap defined class name sorry uh, so only thing you need to do is to go through the bootstrap documentation available in the internet and you can easily remember this by practicing so and we are going to use an, on our specific style so we are going to use a margin bottom of 0 because whenever you use, you use navbar and navbar default under the navigation bar it it is already a uh, little space is defined which is very which is, which may not uh, come together with your design so we say that by this line we say that there should be no space so inside that we are going to create a container now it is very uh, useful to create a container because it gives us the responsiveness fill and also aligned with specific browsers so 
actually what happens we will come to that when we run the project then we are going to create two sections one on one in the left and one in the right the left one will have the name jk art gallery and the right portion will have links to the other pages so we're going to create a grid so we're going to create a row and inside that row we are going to create two columns now if you know bootstrap already you know that the total width is di divided into 12 equal parts so as we are using here two parts so it's better if you use uh, two equal sized columns so we are going to use column of size 6 and here we end our column so this is the our first column left column and this is our right column so two columns are created and inside that we are going to write our content so for now let me write this the gallery name in a h1 tag so jk or gallery and in the rightmost tag we're going to use three links for a home page that means this page we're going to create a second page for gallery where you can see all the images and a third page for contact that's a pretty common template for a art gallery site so we're going to use we're going to create it in bootstrap way so we are going to create a list and we're going to use with this class names a pool right that means okay let's not write it here let's see what happens if we write this so we are going to create three links so let me create those links now one very good things for visual studio or visual studio code is that whenever you write a tab let's say a it's pretty common tag and whenever you write a tag href you also have to define it's compulsory so when you when you press a and uh, the list is showing you you press double tab so it's auto completes for that pretty good so our first page will be index and we will call this our home page and let's say three more and this will be our gallery page and this will be our contact page gallery and contact so here we finish our header let's end all the tags okay so before proceeding any further let's run our project and see whatever happened till now so you can see our art gallery is uh, topmost art gallery header is complete although you can see a little bit differences in the uh, font sizes so we're going to fix that and you can see as this part is in the middle of the bar so that's the effect of the container class so it provides a spacious way of managing your content in the middle so but you can see if we inspect the element you can see the column one is actually this much area so the text jk art gallery is left aligned but whenever you go to this next column it's better it will be it will look better if we use this menu to the right hand side isn't it so the space will be properly distributed so for that we are going to use here pull right it's another 
bootstrap defined class so let's refresh it so you can see the column on the left hand right hand side is properly using the area and if we add any more links with that all three will shift left and the next one will come here so this is very useful so that's what till now we'll see you in next video